For thousands of years, the California condor soared along the Pacific coast, and the cliffs, canyons, grasslands, and forests of the American West. This largest flying land bird in North America once ranged from Mexico to Canada. These majestic creatures play an integral part in Native American mythology and were described by explorers Lewis and Clark as the beautiful buzzards of the Columbia. Lewis and Clark's core of discovery had opened the West to a tide of migration. But the rapid influx of settlers, miners, ranchers, and farmers almost immediately began to upset a natural balance that had been in place for thousands of years. California condors are very long-lived. They live about the same length as humans, 60 or 70 years, and they breed very slowly, one chick every two years. So they're uniquely susceptible to anything in the environment that might kill adults. Now, early, early on after the settlers first arrived, the settlers were killing a lot of pest species, and they would use poison. And when the condors came along and ate from the carcasses, they would become poisoned and die also. And then later on, as you get into the early to mid-1900s, uh, power lines started to appear in the environment. Uh, condors can fly into power lines, they can land on power lines and become electric by the power lines. Um, also, as uh, people started to use high-velocity, high-power ammunition in rifles, um, those bullets fragment when they hit the carcass of an animal. And when a condor eats that carcass, they pick up the lead fragments, and they can die of, of, of that kind of uh, poisoning. By the mid-20th century, there were less than 100 condors left alive in the wild. Even though it was protected in 1967, the California condor population continued to decline until in 1982, there were only 22 individuals in the wild. The decision was made by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and our partner organizations that we had to bring them in and start a captive breeding program. And by Easter Sunday, 1987, the last California condor was brought in from the wild. Once the last condor was taken into captivity, the California condor was extirpated from the wild and there were no more wild California condors. With the last wild condor in captivity, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and their partners turned their focus to breeding birds in order to build big enough populations for release. But they had a long road ahead before the California condor could soar once again. After making the difficult decision to capture the remaining wild condors, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service looked ahead to the future of condor recovery. Consistent with the mission of the Fish and Wildlife Service, the California Condor Recovery Program is to establish a self-sustaining population of California condors in the wild. To do this, the Fish and Wildlife Service, along with its partner organization, have established captive breeding programs, set up safe, managed environments to release condors into, and then track and follow those condors to ensure their conservation. Well, the Peregrine Fund, the San Diego Zoo, the Los Angeles Zoo, and the Ventana Wildlife Society, along with us here at the Oregon Zoo, really found condors captivating, and we knew we could do something to help. It was really slow in the beginning. There was a lot of trial and error. We had to teach them what to eat, design their environments in the captivity, and also train them to avoid dangers in the wild. It took 10 years from the start of the breeding program until the first condor was released in the wild, and over 18 years before the first condor hatched in the wild. There are people who worked in this program for over 30 years, and people who work day to day with the condors, they are so dedicated that they'll hover over a single egg for weeks at a time like it's the most precious thing on Earth. Here at the Oregon Zoo's Johnson Center for Wildlife Conservation, we breed California condors for release into the wild. Being one of four facilities is a pretty vital role that we play. We have released quite a few condors into the wild and have significantly added to that population. Every egg we hatch and every bird we raise is important um, to make sure that our birds are ready to go. We limit their human interaction. We have power pole aversion training. We have a lot of natural food items that they learn how to feed on. Uh, we have adult mentors that teach them how to be an actual condor. They're very inquisitive, very curious. Uh, they love to tear stuff apart. Any problem or trouble uh, they can get into, they will do it. But they're, they're really fun to manage. Though missing for 100 years, condors are back in Oregon at the Oregon Zoo and the Johnson Center for Wildlife Conservation.
From the 22 remaining condors in 1987, there are now over 200 soaring over California, Arizona, Utah, and Mexico. And many of these are now breeding in the wild. Every nest site, every egg, every new hatchling is closely monitored in the hopes that it reaches maturity. And each year, more condors are being released into the wild but extreme challenges still face every California condor. The goal of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Recovery Program and pretty much the goal of, of everybody involved in the project is to have a self-sustaining population of condors uh, that will not be so heavily managed by people. The problem with condors today is pretty much the same problem that we've had for 50 years and the condors are dying from lead poisoning. Condors eat lead, they ingest it, we need to test them and a lot of times treat them. One of the other problems that we're finding is uh, the chicks are being fed and ingesting micro trash, which is small pieces of tin and glass and plastic. We are constantly having to trap them up, treat them, re-release them, and then that same cycle may happen again. We have to trap them up again. Uh, so it's just a vicious cycle that, that keeps going. So even in the wild, the condors are, are a very heavily managed population at this point. Some of the birds that are found injured in the wild are actually brought back into captivity because they can play an important role in the California condor recovery program. Some serve as ambassadors in zoo habitats, some serve as mentors for younger birds, and others re-enter the breeding program so we can release even more condors to the wild. The challenge now is how to make wild condor populations self-sustaining. The answer is relatively simple. First is to switch to non-lead ammunition because this is the leading cause of condor mortality by far. The second is to make sure that trash is never left in the environment. Essentially, we need to pick up after ourselves. So until we can solve those two problems, condors will not be self-sustaining in the wild. From the brink of extinction and through the efforts of thousands of people, the condor is once again flying above North America. The goal now of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Condor Recovery Program is a population that is truly wild and free to fly as it has for thousands of years. With the Oregon Zoo's commitment to making a better future for wildlife, perhaps the condor will once again be soaring in the skies above Oregon.